very excited about the next part of this meeting. I'm doing my little teacherly act of getting everybody's attention because we are now going to uh, introduce the senior speaker, a very special person uh, in the FHS community. I'm going to ask Alana Lynch, class president, to introduce the senior speaker. FHS student come speak with us today. Queen is a former peer leader at FHS who will speak about her life in Tanzania. She recounts her childhood trials and tribulations as well as her triumphs. And Queen is a dynamic speaker with an inspiring story that everyone should hear. We are very lucky to hear her valuable advice on perseverance and hard work to achieve goals. So let's give a warm welcome to Queen. I just realized that I don't have pockets, so I don't know what I'm going to do with my hands, but, okay. Good morning, everybody. Hello, Sam. I know that. Hello, everybody. That's too loud? I'm okay? Are we playing the guessing game? Nobody wants to talk to me? Not All right, let's get this all over again. Good morning. That was actually my one of the lines during uh, when I was uh, in your shoes when I was uh, in high school. I always tell people good morning. So even if it's afternoon, but I'll be like good morning because I always just say good morning. So I'm glad today is morning time, so I don't have to rehearse to say good afternoon. But anyways, so I am very happy to be here. Why, why do I feel this is so loud? I think it's really loud. Oh yeah, thank you. I am. Just lower the mic. Lower it. No, you put it back up. Put it back up. I need it. There you go. Okay. <laughs> All right, I'm very happy to be here today, and I'm going to say congratulations once again. I know you haven't heard it many, many times, but you deserve to hear it. Congratulations. It was not an easy journey, was it? Who here just had like just a smooth journey? Oh, okay, all right, no shame with that. All of you uh, have to struggle, right, here and there to get in here. I'm happy to be here today. Um, I was in your shoes not that long time ago, actually four years ago. I was sitting in chairs less fancier than this. Auditorium, way less fancy than this, right? Does anybody remember the old school here? Oh, yeah, so you guys are there. Oh, okay. Alright, yeah, this is my first time. So I was sitting, just as you guys are sitting here today, and waiting to hear one more last speaker before the graduation ceremony. And I am blessed to be in your presence, to share this moment, to share with you a few last words of advice that I feel will help you in your journey as you branch away from Franklin High School. I'm going to share with you three words. Reboot, relationships, and flexibility. Before we start with, I'm going to tell you about my personal life story and how those three words have helped me get from who I was to who I am today. So nine years ago, nine years ago, I was in Tanzania. If nobody is familiar where Tanzania is, I would assume you know where Kenya is, East Africa. Yeah, because they do the marathon thing, they run and they always win. Well, <laughs> we are next door to them. We actually share water. Right? But nobody knows where Tanzanians are because we don't do the entire running thing. But believe me, we do the stretching part. But nobody wins any matters for stretching. But when you look at the starting line, who stretches the most are Tanzanians. But we just don't choose to do the running. We let them do the running thing, right? That's why we're not famous, right? But it's our choice. We choose not to do the running thing. But anyways, uh, Tanzania is right next door to, to Kenya. And I was in Tanzania and 
I was getting ready to return back to boarding school and I was told that you're no longer going to go to boarding school, you're going to be packing your bags and you'll be moving to the United States. And I would assume that anybody else who would be in my shoes at that particular moment will be upset. The thought of leaving everything you know behind, your friends, your loved ones, even the food you grew up liking, you're going to leave all of that and just going to pack your bags and go away? But that was not me. I was super excited. Oh, I didn't even ask where the United States was. I was terrible in geography, so I didn't even know where the United States was. But I was so excited. I couldn't wait to go that plane. Even though I, could, I did not know how to speak English that well, except for saying good morning and goodbye, I was pumped. This was because I really do not have life worth protecting in Tanzania. I didn't have friends, family, that I would say I would be sad leaving them behind. I didn't even have a life that I wanted to be. The life that mattered to me, I lost it when I was five years old. In 1998, I end up losing my family one by one from HIV AIDS. And before you know it, I look around and I'm by myself. And the relatives who were there, they were not there to love me, to guide me, to help me grow stronger and wiser over the years. They were there to help me. And so my life after 1998 was a life filled with hurt and neglect. So when I was told that you're going to be going to the United States, they could ship me in some, throw the land, just take me out of there. I had nothing. And so in the plane, I remember, in the plane to the United States, and I was so excited until, until it was time to eat. So I remember they gave me a salad, and it was the first time to eat a salad. I'm like, what the heck? And where exactly am I going? <laughs> yeah. sitting on coach, they don't care for you, really. You know, you don't, you don't even ask, could I get a, some chicken with that? You don't. They don't care. So I took some time to look back and think of my life in Tanzania, what kind of person I was in Tanzania. And I didn't like anything about me. Because I was nothing but a scared, scared little girl dying for a second chance. I've always wanted a second chance. I've always dreamed for it. I just wanted just a chance to, to correct the wrongs, to be somebody that I want to be, to be somebody else than who I was. And I knew in order for something like that to take place, I will need an environment for it. So coming to the US, a country far away from the continent that I grew up in. A place where food, the language, and even the attitudes of the people are different from what I was used to. I thought that was going to be my playground. That was going to be my safe place to be. So the question became, how are you going to do it? How are you going to build yourself the new you? So coming to the U.S., October, 13th, October 23rd, 2007, was my chance to reboot. And I knew that I couldn't do it alone. I can't do it alone. You can't just build yourself a new you and think you're going to stand by yourself because our lives are a combination of so many things, right? You, I mean, if I ask you, who are you, what would you say? You are Emily, your name. Parents at home? Yes. Okay. Friends. Yeah. I'm glad you said no, that you have friends. Because that would be sad if you said that. Emily said she doesn't have any friends. You guys are bad. That would be bad. So I too will need parents. I too will need friends. But not just any friends or any parents. I want better relationships. I want new relationships. I want people who would help me be the person that I want to be. Things like friends and family became 
extremely important. And every single day I worked very hard to keep the relationships that I had. I worked hard to maintain the relationships that I had. I worked hard to make to earn the love and the trust of my family. I ended up getting a brand new family when I came to the US and I'm like, I'm the youngest child in the family and it's amazing. I love being the youngest. You don't have to share anything with anybody. You know, you're the baby. And I had fun here. I had a great time in high school. And every single day in high school, it was like Christmas Day. And I was the Christmas tree. Because I dressed up like a dead Christmas tree every single day. Oh my God. I had like ear over there, necklaces, endless bracelets like there's no tomorrow. I would wear the entire rainbow. Oh, I look like a dead crown. Oh, yeah. And actually, I believed to myself that I actually, my fashion was the best fashion. So when I did not get voted as best dressed, who I was upset. Oh, yes, I was upset. I think, how could they? But now, looking back at my yearbook, I'm like, oh my god. Did I have to really? I had a great time. But like anything else, you know, it, it has its due date. You know, high school, you don't stay in high school forever, even though I really wanted to stay in high school forever. And so when I got to the point where you guys are today, excited to graduate, right? Who here wants to stay behind? And there's no shame in that because I felt the same way. Okay, thank you. Are you, are you all telling me you cannot wait to get out of here? Yes. Is it the food? Oh, no. <laughs> you want to stay here yeah, too? Sorry. And everything, and I would daydream. Oh, I'm not even attending class. 
I'm like, why should I listen? This is not going to be me. I'm going to be in front of the camera. Well, the hell do I need to know about being behind the camera? If you want to be behind the camera, then you should pay attention. I'm waiting for the part of being in front of the camera. That I'll take notes. I believed in it so much. So when I graduated, and of course, the first thing you're supposed to do is like, applying for jobs. Oh, there's no summer. Oh, no, 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 no. Right there, you start applying for jobs because those college loans, they are be knocking on your door very soon. Saying, all right, show me the money. So I had all this big network, CBS, you know, competing for as an on air talent. And instead of job search to be so good, because it's the first time in your life you're actually applying for jobs that you're going to school for and you have the degree to show it. So you're not working in an ice cream store or anything like that. You know, you're not competing for that. That was cool in high school, but not now at the stage. Nothing about it was fun, it was stressful. It was hurtful. Because I can't tell you how sad it was to not get an email, get a, um, a call to ask you to come in for an interview. When you're trying to apply for a job and you're looking at the job requirements and they're telling you you have to have a minimum of three to four years of experience excluding what you did in school. It was hurtful. It was frustrating. I'm like, something is not adding up. Because I always approached life as a math equation. Right? In math, one plus one equals two. Simple. I said to myself, if you want to be a new person, then what are you supposed to do? So I put the drivers together, okay, I need myself a new family, I need myself a new good friends, I need this and this and this and this. And it added up. I ended up being the person that I want to be. So I said, even college will be the same way. I want to be a TV journalist, right? So I looked at, okay, what are you supposed to do? What classes are you supposed to take? What kind of internship should you get? Portfolio should build for yourself. And each day in school, it was towards that goal. Those were my values, and the answer was, as soon as they get you that, de that degree of yours, you'll be a TV person now. And it was not adding up, because I was not a TV person now. And I'm like, where did I go wrong? I ended up realizing that well, after graduating college, that's when I ended up learning my third most important lesson in life, flexibility. Be able to be fluid with your life. It was not to be realistic. I don't like the word being realistic, because being realistic is something I tell you, you know what, you should just, if you're living a happy life, then just put up with it. That's being realistic. Being flexible is to be fluid. Yes, there's an obstacle in front of you, so where, which, what's the next road? You don't just sit there and stare. So today I shared with you three lessons, three words. Reboot, relationships, and flexibility. Relationships. You're all here today because of something. Life is not about being alone, and neither should you stand alone. There was a friend, there were parents, there were teachers. Somebody said something to you that made you stay. Made you say, you know what, four years, okay, it's just four years, I can't put up with that. And as you got closer to four years, then you're thinking bigger now. Maybe four more extra years. And as you branch away from FHS, Keep the relationships and build yourself new ones. Give yourself the chance to see what is out there. Who is out there? Right? I mean, the, the thing, I remember, when I was in, in high school, and you, know, you have a lot of friends and so forth, and you go to college, you have new friends, and then you're trying to say the balance 
of who, you know, how, who, how many friends from high school you're gonna keep and, you know, you're trying, but you shouldn't decide. As long as those relationships are meaningful to you. Because now you're at the stage of just not having a friend for the sake of having a friend. Each person needs to count. Are these people good to you? Are these people going to help you be the best person you could be? Bribu, never be afraid to start again. You're going to face challenges, obstacles in your life. That's going to make it hard for you to stay in the path that you want to be in. It could be as simple as when you were in high school, you were here, and you weren't the person that you were, maybe because you're afraid, maybe because you wanted to fit in. Whatever the situation was, very soon you're no longer gonna be in high school. That's your start over mark. So if there is something in your life that you do not like, Start again, scratch it off, write yourself a new story. Put players in your story, put people, characters in your story that matters, that will make your story look good and you will like it. Flexibility. Life is not a math. And maybe somebody told me that a long time ago. But you know what? My ears don't work too good. You see, I won't listen when I want to listen. You know, or I pick up only words that I want to hear. And the rest is just like, yeah, 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 yeah. And I think most of us are like that. <laughs> Life is not a magnification. It's amazing to make plans. It's amazing to know what you're going to do after high school. Okay, I'm going to ask you a question. Are you shy? Oh, you're shy. You're not shy. Oh, okay. All right. So, what's your name? Yeah. All right. Thank you for that. Jacob! <laughs> what are you going to do after high school? What's the plan? I'm going to college. Are yeah, you going to go? Who 
is behind it, what is behind it, it's exciting. Some of you are going to graduate three years from now, some of you four years from now, some of you are going to say, you know what, school is fantastic, I'm going to stay. And some of you are going to date school, and be like, you know what, this relationship is not working. <laughs> yeah, high school was enough. Thank you, but no thanks. And that is fine. Why should you be the same? Why should you like be the same as her? They're two different people. It's fine as long as you keep learning, as long as you keep loving yourself. Lessons come in all shapes and sizes. Do not measure yourself against somebody else. It's going to drive you bananas. You're going to go crazy. Say, oh my God, okay, I'm in, I'm in junior year and I have one more year, but okay, what is Mary doing? Oh, she's about to graduate. Oh, I'm way behind her. It's going to drive you crazy. Because each time you measure yourself against somebody else, you come up short. You end up feeling like you, there's something missing in you. And when you measure somebody, you get somebody else, and actually, you know, we, we tend to pick people who are like, ah, I'm sure I'm way better than her. So let me measure myself with her. You know, oh, I'm way better. And that, you end up losing relationships. Good relationships that you have with people. Do not measure yourself. Focus on you. Focus on your own stuff there. It's you. What is good for you? What is your journey? And how can you get it? I am a true believer that your life is your own and you can create your own story and you can get to have your own story. But it takes work. It takes work. Nothing about it is easy. But that's what's fun about it. So, I'm telling you one again, once again, congratulations for making this far. And I am so happy for all of you. Because it is fun where you're going. Whenever the journey is taking you, it is amazing. It's just your attitude. If you don't like something, change it. You have that power. Change it. It's simple as that. Do not be the same person if you don't wish today. Focus on what's important to you. How you can get there. Put your variables together. And if you come out short, if the answer is not the answer that you want, the answer that you feel you deserve, it's all right. Because you will get there. It just means you have to take a little detour. Not the driving. Somebody's doing construction. Like, oh, yeah. Take a little detour. You're still going to end up in your destination. It's just not the road that you thought you were going to take. So, thank you all for listening. I am happy to be here. I'm happy to share this moment with all of you. I'm excited, and maybe you guys do not know why I'm excited, but maybe very soon you'll end up finding out why I'm excited. It's a great time. It's going to be a summer of barbecues, right? Oh, I was hoping from one house to another every single day. Summer of barbecues. Sign each other's uh, earbooks. Well, yeah, even if you don't know the person, which is bad, you should know everybody. Sign each other's ear books. Talk to one another. And have a wonderful